Good morning students. Welcome to the English class. I am Dr. Tripti Gupta from Shiv Jyoti Education Group, Kota. Now students, today we are going to take up from your book Footprint, chapter number 7, The Necklace, written by Gay D. Maupassant. Now, before moving to this chapter, uh, let us look about some information about our author. So, students, our author Gay D. Maupassant was born in Normandy in 1850. At his parents separation, he stayed with his mother, who was a friend of Flaubert. As a young man, he was lively and athletic, but the first symptom of syphilis appeared in late 1870s. By this time, Maupassant had become Flaubert's pupil in the art of prose. On the publication of the first short story to which he put his name, Bowley D. Sophie, he left his job in the civil service and his temporary alliance with the disciples of Zola at Maiden and devoted his energy to professional writing. In the next 11 years, he published dozens of articles, nearly 300 stories and 6 novels, the best known of which are A Woman's Life, Bill Emmy and Pierre and Jean. So, this was about our author. Now, let us move towards our story, The Necklace. So, students, our story, The Necklace, here, our protagonist here is Matilda and she is a very pretty and beautiful woman who is basically discontented and dissatisfied and used to live a very unhappy life just because she wanted to be a rich and affluent person and wanted to uh, enjoy the lavishes and riches of the life. But as the destiny and was that she belonged to a very middle class family uh, or the family of clerks and then she got married also to a very lowly clerk and that is why she was leading a life which was a very normal uh, middle class life and that was leading her to be unhappy about uh, her state at which she was been living. Now, here the story starts here as she was one of those pretty young ladies born as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks. She had no dowry, no hopes, no means of becoming known, loved and married by a man either rich or distinguished. She allowed herself to marry a petty clerk in the office of board of education. She was simple, but she was unhappy. So, I was telling you about this complete aspect of our protagonist Matilda and she was basically an unhappy woman who was married to a petty clerk. Now, she suffered incessantly feeling herself born for all delicacies and luxuries. So, this was her self uh, presumed aspect that she felt like that, that she being so pretty, so delicate woman, she has been born to, to enjoy the riches and luxuries and the delicacies of life, but she was been, uh, uh, she was not been having all those things in her life basically. She suffered from the poverty of her apartment, the shabby walls and the worn chair. All these thing, things tortured and angered her. So, the, the way she was leading her life was resulting in lots of anger and anguish and the uh, she was been disheartened and basically she felt like that she has been tortured in her life because she was leading a poor life, a poverty striking life. Okay. So, when she seated herself for dinner opposite her husband, 
so who uncovered the tureen with a delighted air saying oh the good pot pie I know nothing better than that and she would think of elegant dinners of shining silver she thought of execute exquisite food served in marvelous dishes she had neither frocks nor jewels nothing and she loved only those things now while she see here there is a word we been you use to rain to rain is basically a pot covered dish and which has been having uh, which is used for serving soups okay so when he used to see that pot pie he was been overwhelmed oh he was been excited to see that dish whereas matilda on the other hand she felt that uh, she used to keep thinking and wondering about how those elegant and nicely served dinners with exquisite um, exquisite food means very lavish and rich and tasty food which has to be served with riches okay so she used to wonder about those wonderful dinners and about the uh, her possessions like she may possess some beautiful dresses frocks and jewels jewelry which actually she was not possessing but she keeps on wondering about those riches and luxuries now she had a rich friend a schoolmate at the convent who she did not like to visit she suffered so much when she returned she wept for whole day from despair and disappointment now looking at the riches of her one of her friends she used to feel even more disheartened and out of that despair out of that disheartened and dissatisfaction she kept crying and she kept mourning for all those poverty which she has been suffering from so after that one evening what happened uh this was the state through which she was been going and her life was been moving like this and that and one day what happened that even in the evening her husband returned elated bearing in his hand a large envelope now he was he returned elated means very happy and what he was carrying he was carrying an envelope and actually it was an invitation to the party now here he said here is something for you he was very excited that uh, he has got an invitation from the minister's party and that is why he ha was showing that invitation to matilda in a very excited manner now she quickly drew out a printed card on which were inscribed these words the minister of public instructions and madam George Rampinus asked the honor of Monsieur and Madame Lossel's company Monday evening January 18 at the minister's residence so this was the formal invitation which was been inscribed inscribed means it was been engraved the words were been scribbled they were been engraved and embossed basically and that is could that could be read here in this manner the invitation was been written on the card instead of being delighted as her husband had hoped she threw the invitation spitefully upon the table murmuring what do you suppose i want with that now what exactly is uh, what exactly it was been it was a very contrasting reaction which her husband got when he gave that uh, invitation he was hopeful that probably this invitation will uh, delight her she will be very happy to find this invitation from a very nice big party in the minister's house and but uh, on the opposite sa note matilda she, she was been uh, she was actually very disheartened and out of uh, um she just threw that invitation away and she was been asking uh, that what do you suppose you want the reaction from me what do you suppose to uh, find me do you want me to happy for this invitation now but my dearie i thought it would make you happy 
you never go out and this is an occasion and a fine one everybody wishes one and it is very select so not many are given to employees you will see the whole official word there so his husband um, loisel he was been explaining her that why are you not happy about this invitation and he was very ex in a very excited manner he was been explaining that it would be a wonderful party you will find all the people from various government official world they will be there or affluent people will be there and you will love to be in the company of those rich and affluent people it will be uh, something and very few people very few employees are actually been uh, invited so you are the one of the fortunates to get that invitation so that's why he was been considering that this invitation will be a happy moment for them so uh, what she says here see she looked at him with an irritated eye and declared impatiently what do you suppose i have to wear to such a thing as that now she was been actually thinking of that what she would carry how she would carry herself how what she will actually wear in that party now that's what was the question that she puts up in front of him she had not thought of that he had not thought of that he stammered why the dress you wear when you go to the theater it seems very pretty to you to me he was silent stupefied in dismay at the sight of his wife weeping so when he he was suggesting that the dress you normally used to uh, wear when you go to theater it's a pretty one and you can uh, he suggested to uh, put on that dress whereas uh matilda on the other hand she started weeping crying and um, her husband was unable he was been very shocked to find her crying like this and he was also feeling that sadness and finding his wife to be crying what's what is the matter what is the matter and he was been anxious to know why she is been crying by violent effort she had controlled her vexation uh, and responded in a calm voice wiping her moist cheeks nothing only i have no dress and consequently i can't go to this affair give your card to some colleague whose wife is better fitted out than i so here in a very uh, disheartened manner she shares that see i i do not have a dress which would actually fit to this occasion and probably that is the reason why i feel that the, i should not go to this party affair here this word is been used and it has been referred to the party on for which they have got the invitation and that's why she suggests him that you should give this card to someone else who can actually make out whose wife is having such dress who can actually attend the party so she suggests that he was grieved but answered let us see matilda how much would a suitable costume cost something that would serve for other occasions something very simple now here uh, lozel he was been uh, look he was been uh, when he answered after for matilda he said okay don't just cry don't lose your heart like this and let's see what can be done and he asked about that how much it would cost to have a, a simple dress or a dress which could suit this occasion and let me see how how it can be managed so she reflected for some seconds thinking of a sum that she could ask for without bringing with it an immediate refusal and a frightened exclamation from the economical clerk now here matilda started working out in her mind that what could be that sum which will actually fit the pocket 
uh, which could be afford, uh, at an affordable aspect for um, Lozil and here he she started uh, she was also thinking about that probably if we, she will quote a higher sum probably he may refuse and he may get frightened and uh, surprised to know that sum of money. So, finally, she said in a hesitating manner. Now, what she said exactly is she said in a very hesitating voice and uh, I cannot tell exactly but it seems to me that 400 francs ought to cover it. Now, she reveals here that probably 400 francs will be enough amount to purchase a new dress attire for the party. He turned a little pale for he had saved just the sum to buy a gun that he might be able to join some hunting parties the next summer with some friends who went to shoot larks on Sunday. Nevertheless, he answered very well, I will give you 400 francs, but try to have a pretty dress. Now, so uh, he had 400 francs and actually he had saved it for purchasing a gun, but now he spares that amount for her, her happiness that and he agrees to give that amount to Matilda so that she can come out with a uh, for making uh, get a proper suitable dress and he asked for that that you should find out a pretty dress out of this amount. Now, the day of ball approached and Madame Losil seemed sad, disturbed, anxious. Now, what exactly was going on as the day of the part day, the D day, party day was been approaching nearer, he was finding that Matilda was um, been very depressed, she, she seems to be very anxious, very sad and nevertheless her dress was nearly ready. Her husband said to her one evening, what is the matter with you? you have acted strangely for two or three days. So, he was noticing that Matilda was been uh, feeling very depressed, she, she, he felt that she is in a very state of depression and she was feeling sad and quite anxious about something, something was bothering her and that is why he asked Matilda that what exactly is bothering you, what is the reason that you are being so anxious from last? Two, three days and she responded, I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with. I shall have such a poverty striking look, I would prefer not to go to this party. Now again she reveals what was exactly the bothering aspect was that she was not having a jewelry for which she wanted to carry along with her new dress. So, the she was saying that she wanted to have to wear that jewelry so that she can edify, she can uh, give an ornamental or and beautiful look to her dress which can complement her dress and that is why she again says that with that poverty striking look without any jewelry she does not want to go to that party. He replied, you can wear some natural flowers, in this season they look very chic. Now, what he suggests here that you can always complement your dress with, with beautiful nice natural flowers, that was his suggestion. And here she was not convinced with his suggestion, no, she replied, there is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women. Now, what she was saying that probably she won, she would be one of the odd one out over there among those rich and affluent ladies over there in the party. So, she does not find that going in the party without wearing a jewelry piece. Now, here, then her husband cried out, how stupid we are. Go and find your friend Mem 
madam forced you and ask her to lend your jewels now now what exactly uh, there are suggestions and an idea tried to mr lewis lucil and he he said that you why not you go to your one of your old friend miss madam forster and he said that you should uh, borrow a piece of jewelry from her because she is quite rich and she can always give you her jewelry now th this suggestion was it made matilda to be very excited and she was she also exclaimed here see here she uttered a cry of joy it is true she said i had not thought of that the next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress madam forster went to her closet took out a large jewel box brought it opened it and said choose my dear and see here mrs uh, madam forster she was been uh, a very generous lady and she just came out with her jewelry box and when uh, matilda she shared her story that why she is been uh, disheartened why she is been sad so she offered that she can take any piece of jewelry from her collection now for that she opened her jewelry collection and she asked matilda to watch, make a choice what exactly she wants now she saw at first some bracelets then a collar of pearls and then a venetian cross of gold and jewels of admirable workmanship she tried the jewels before the glass hesitated but could neither decide to take them nor leave them now what she was looking at she was looking at various pieces jewelry pieces in that particular collection but she was not decisive up till now and she was hesitant also very reluctant uh, not able she actually wanted them wanted one of them but she uh, was unable to say it also she was hesitant also then she asked have you nothing more because she was not finding a right fit jewelry in that collection why yes look for yourself i do not know what will please you so now she opens her uh, uh, um, with a bigger collection what she says and she says see i cannot understand what's your requirement is so just go ahead and explore what exactly you want suddenly she discovered a black satin uh, satin box a superb necklace of diamonds her hands trembled as she took it out she placed it about her throat against her dress was and was aesthetic now finally matilda she found a beautiful diamond neck piece which was there in a satin cover and she was uh, like she was out, out of excitement and joy she was been trembling she was shivering her hands because she was been happy to find a beautiful neck piece and she felt that it must be very precious also and and she found that probably that jewelry would be a beautiful one it will complement beautifully to her dress then she asked in a hesitating voice full of anxiety she was been very anxious whether she, uh miss madam forster she will be uh, actually giving her or lending her that uh, neck piece or not okay so in a very hesitant manner she said could you lend me this only this why yes certainly so very in a very uh, generous manner she uh, agrees to lend that neck piece to matilda now she fell upon the neck on of her friend embrace her with passion and then went away with her treasure so finally she embraced she admired uh, madam forster for her generosity and how she has helped her 
and she just uh, just hugged her and finally um, with all her happiness she was very glad to find that piece of jewelry and finally she left the place for her house with that neck piece the day of the ball arrived madam lozel was a great success she was the prettiest of all elegant gracious smiling and full of joy so on the party day she was been looking marvelous very pretty one of the prettiest lady in the ball was matilda and she was very beautiful looking in very happy out of her complete the way she has carried herself it was really elegant and beautiful to find she was really looking gracious all the men noticed her asked her name and wanted to be presented so everybody was noticing everybody was giving her attention and she was also very happy to find that attention that everybody is noticing that she is one of the prettiest ladies in the in that room and everybody was offering her um, for a dance she danced with enthusiasm intoxicated with pleasure thinking of nothing but all the admiration this victory so complete and sweet to her heart so finally she enjoyed the complete evening she kept dancing for hours in the over the very enthusiastically in a very uh, pleasureful manner she was enjoying the complete dance and thinking of uh, how she has been admired how she has been praised for her beauty the various compliments she was been getting and she was feeling very triumphatic very victorious that she has actually made her the day her presence has been she loved the way she was been attended by and everybody was noticing and that was the how she was been full she was feeling very happy very and that moment which she was experience experiencing was a very sweet moment and she was full of joy over there she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning her husband had been half asleep in one of the little saloons since midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much so while with tilda she kept dancing right till 4 in the morning his husband um Uh, her husband uh, Ms. mr lozel he was been waiting for her and he was he actually went for, he just he was asleep in one of the rooms over there and up there were other three more gentlemen whose wives were also been enjoying the party he threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume now uh, as they were been moving out of the party hall so he wrapped her with a wrap with a coat and actually that was not that rich that was not that um, uh, lavish so um, she was it was clashing actually with the riches of that the lavishes of that beautiful dress which matilda was wearing she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by other women who were wrapping themselves in rich fur so she did not want to get noticed why because she did not want to make people to understand that she is actually not that rich as she pretended to be as she projected presented herself in the party so lozel detained her wait said he i am going to call a cab see it was quite late in the night so lozel he was uh, a bit worried so he he just restricted her and he asked her to wait and so that he can call a cab but she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly she did not want to wait just because she did not want to get noticed by other people when they were in the street they found no carriage 
they began to seek for one hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance. So, uh, in the street they found a uh, coach there were there was a carriage and they were being just um, shouting so that they can call the coachman ok. So, they walked along towards the river hopeless and shivering. Finally, they found one of those old carriages that one sees in Paris after nightfall. So, finally, they managed to have a ca carri carriage and that carriage was actually uh, those carriages which could be seen on the streets in the Paris after the midnight time. So, it took them as far as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment. So, finally, they were very very tired and they were they shivered actually they experienced cold in that carriage because that was not actually up to the mark. But uh, since Matilda was in a hurry, so they went and uh, they took that carriage and finally, they were at their house they managed to come to their apartment. It was all over for her and on his part he remembered that he would have to be at the office by 10 o'clock. So, finally, Mr. Lozil he was being worried about his next day schedule that he has to reach his office by 10. So, he was being thinking wondering of that aspect and for Matilda the evening was a complete uh, matter of joy and it was all over for her. Now, she was back in her old state of he, she was back in her actual life. Now, she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory. Suddenly, she uttered a cry. Her necklace was not around her neck. Now, when she was been looking at the mirror and uh, for the last sight for uh, admiring her look, she was looking at the mirror and then she found she discovered that the neck piece that the diamond necklace which she had borrowed from uh, Madame Forster is missing it is not there in her neck. 